Quebec Hydro will be commissioning its La Romaine uh, hydroelectric project uh, this year. And it looks like, uh, by all accounts, that it'll be the last one, uh, maybe ever, but certainly for the foreseeable future, uh, for uh, one of uh, North America's biggest utilities. So I want to talk to Professor uh, Pierre-Olivier uh, Pinot about that. He is the uh, chair in the energy sector management at HS HEC Montreal. So welcome, Pierre-Olivier. Hi, thank you very much for having me. So what's going on here? Why is Hydro-Quebec look, you know, maybe putting the brakes on a little bit on uh, hydroelectric development? Well, there are different factors. I would say the, the first one is really the export market it hasn't been uh, that easy uh, over the last five to 10 years for, for Quebec and for different utilities across uh, Canada. Uh, what were hopes of high uh, electricity prices, you know, in, in the early 2000s, uh, they were, you know, they, we were having uh, extremely high natural gas prices, but after the shale gas revolution, these natural gas prices collapsed and, and they basically uh, bring with them uh, electricity prices. So export prices are significantly lower than expected. So easy exports on the spot markets are not anymore uh, the norm. And, and at the same time, wind projects have seen their cost going down big time in different all, all over the world. Uh, so basically, the advantage of hydropower is as, as mostly disappeared with uh, low export prices and uh, cheap or relatively cheap renewable alternatives in the form of wind and solar. So that's why basically uh, hydro projects uh, are not that interesting anymore. Right. We should point out for our, our uh, viewers that this is the uh, fourth part of a, uh, the last part of a four-part uh, project. There are uh, three other uh, dams. This one uh, has a generating capacity of 245 megawatts. That's eight terawatt hours per year and costs $7.3 billion. Uh, not quite as high as maybe about half of what the Site C dam in BC is going to cost, but nevertheless, a, a significant price tag. And what I find interesting here, uh, Pierre Olivier, is that Quebec Hydro is now commissioning more solar and wind uh, projects. And it seems like they, you know, they understand really well that, you know, hydro dams are like big batteries when it comes to intermittent renewals. Yes, uh, and, and well, Quebec is very fortunate because we have Hydro Quebec has in its portfolio have a lot of um, of, of reservoir storage capacity, 175 terawatt hour of uh, reservoir capacity storage capacity, which is often not included in these uh, storage capacities that we all say are key to integrate uh, and balance wind and solar, but they are uh, actually key and existing storage capacities. Uh, and just to put that in perspective, 175 five terawatt hour of capacity that's that's about the the yearly energy demand in quebec so in in principle in theory we could store the whole energy you know in the form of water under uh, behind the dams of hydro quebec and and basically supply uh, quebec's need for a full year of course there are lots of um, operational constraints that prevent that but um but yes, wind and solar are uh, the cheapest energy sources and complemented with uh, storage, uh, hydropower storage in the case of Quebec, but that could happen in, in Manitoba and BC, then you know, it's the perfect duo to, uh, to basically bring renewable and stability into the market. But new storage, uh, new hydropower, new reservoir, these are extremely difficult right now for a variety of reasons, uh, but public acceptability, social acceptability is is key in Quebec, and there is little appetite for uh, for more dams. And you mentioned the problems with exports. We we just saw uh, late last year the that transmission line. I forget the name of it just offhand, but the one was going from Quebec to New Hampshire and then into New England was was defeated in a referendum. And it seems like building transmission across the border into that market is really really difficult. It is, and that's of course uh, a key problem. Is the New England Clean Energy Connect that was supposed to go through Maine to reach the the Massachusetts market because it's really uh, uh, the Boston market that was targeted with this um, this transmission line, uh, and it's. It, 
transmission is a problem. Uh, the Americans and Canadians have not realized yet the, the amount of renewable energy that, that will be required to decarbonize uh, the grid. And uh, but once we realize the amount of renewable, then you know transmission lines would actually appear to be uh, very good. And I think the opposition will will be uh, overcome because because it's so important. And, and, and if we don't have these transmission lines, then there is, so, there is basically so much more renewable that has to be built or storage that has to be built that uh, transmission becomes in, in comparison, uh, a lesser worse than, um, than, uh, than just building more and more renewable in storage. So transmission is actually key, but it's not being realized now by markets and by citizens. Uh, so at the, at, the current, at the current time, yes, it is a problem. Now, you mentioned storage, and that's, that's really interesting again with, with respect to Quebec Hydro, because uh, it's doing some, it's changing its utility model a little bit. It's, it's uh, implementing an energy efficiency program, which is not all that revolutionary. I mean, lots of, plenty of, of, of utilities do that, but it's also working on large scale batteries. And, and that is a little bit unusual for a hydro based utility to do. Why are they, why are they looking at uh, batteries? Well, there, there's, uh, there's, there has been a, historically in with Hydro Quebec a, a long uh, research uh, agenda and then and, and a, a strong research and uh, lots of uh, you know patents and discoveries. And Hydro Quebec has in store uh, many patents and then you know uh, technologies, battery technologies that are uh, very that could be very interesting. They're expensive, but they're quality batteries, uh, and they basically try. They, they currently now try to uh, monetize these investments by by offering these uh, these different types of batteries to the wholesale market. Uh, the big paradox is that the type of solutions they provide requires uh, requires an open market, which is not the case in Quebec. So basically, Hydro Quebec is developing a business that that could hardly uh, happen in Quebec. It has to happen in in a in a more open market, and maybe that will help Hydro Quebec to realize it has to to evolve towards a more open uh, market system in Quebec because it's hard to convince people to adopt uh, solutions when you know uh, the re reciprocity wouldn't be there. Because for a similar company to come to Quebec, it would be extremely hard to sell these kind of products to the in, in the grid. Um, but yes, Hydro Quebec is you know is a huge company lots of uh, R&D and they're just trying to uh, cash on these R&D discoveries they've made over the last years. Now, uh, uh, last fall in the federal election, the, 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 the Liberals ran on a, well, part of their platform was a pan-Canadian grid council and they've made some, uh, set out some signals already that they're going to be proceeding with this in, in 2022. And part of that is basically to build transmission east and west in, in Canada. Uh, so we get more of this trade, as particularly between provinces that have renewable capacity and then provinces like Quebec that have all this hydro capacity, again, getting back to batteries. So that seems to make a lot of sense. Is that something that, you know, down the road, say five years, when if this grid council is successful, that might cause Hydro Quebec to reassess uh, whether it, it wants to build more dams? Could be the case in the future, because there's still some projects, especially in Labrador. We have, we have all heard about the Muscat Falls and the, the many different issues uh, with Muscat Falls, uh, similar types of issues than uh, that Site C is uh, facing in, in BC. Uh, but there are more projects. I mean, there is this Gull Island project, which is bigger than Muscat Falls, that could be uh, you know economical to build if there was enough collaboration regionally to basically build it, uh, build a transmission line and find the market for that. So yes, I think there could be one or two more big projects, but most likely the Gull Island project, but it would really require, require as you said, uh, more collaboration across provinces to make sure that you know, there is an agreement that that electricity is going to meet decarbonization targets in some other provinces. Uh, joint planning is, it would be required between provinces. Uh, so there is a long road before we can actually talk about uh, our, plausible uh, next hydro pro project. Well, Pierre, Olivier, thank you very much. I always appreciate your, uh, your insights. Thank you very much. Have a good day.